Hi folks, I have a new gadget to show you for the BBC Microbit and it's this from a company called Protopic. This is the Micropixel and it's an array of 32 NeoPixels arranged 8 by 4 as you can see it. So it basically gives you an external display for the Microbit. Uh, without any of the messy soldering that tends to come with NeoPixels because this has a handy edge connector and the micro bit just slides in like this. One second. There we go. And you can still power it with the uh, connector here or with USB. And you still get access to the original connector bits on the micro bit allowing you to put crocodile leads and whatnot on. So I thought to myself what sort of a game could I develop on this kind of display given the fact that we can now reproduce different colors which is something you could never do on this little 5x5 display. So I could develop a game like this I suppose maybe some kind of space invaders or breakout type game or this which got me in the mind of Tetris but it's obviously too small for a full game of Tetris, so I came up with something a little bit Tetris-like, but uh, somewhat different as well. So the game I'm about to show you, it's a falling block game. Um, unfortunately, I did a little test and the colors don't come out all that well uh, on camera, but they look really good to the naked eye. So that's something, unfortunately, a problem that I can't quite overcome. So what you're going to see, I'll just plug it in and I'll let you see it directly rather than rather than explain it beforehand. So there's some blocks at the top and they start to fall down the left hand side. So what these are at the top, this is your queue of blocks that are coming next. It allows you to see what color is coming directly. So that's a green one. There's a purple one, now a light blue one, followed by two white ones, followed by a green one. But if it reaches the top, it's game over. And that's the end of the game. And if I turn it over, I can see that I scored zero points. <laughs> okay, so the aim of this game is to use the controller here, the, the A and B buttons, to move the blocks about as they fall, just like you do in Tetris but you've got to align them in a particular way. In order to make blocks disappear, you have to line three colors of the same in an L shape. Now, why didn't I pick a straight line of three or a straight line of four or diagonals or something like that? I tried various different configurations. Some of them were too easy, some of them were too hard, but the one that provided the best gameplay experience on this sort of a display, this size of a display, was the L shape. Now by an L shape, what I mean are three pixels. If you think of, uh, you know, four pixels in a square, any three of those four pixels have to be the same color in order for those pixels to disappear. So it can be a back to front L, an upside down L, or a regular L, or whatever. As long as it's an L shape, it will vanish. So let's have a go. Press the reset button and let's try to play the game proper. Okay, here's a green one coming down first. I'll just let that fall. I'll drop this green one beside it and hopefully I'll get another green at some point. But for now, I have to deal with the other colors. Here's purple. Put that over there. Let's put the red one there. I've got a blue one and I've nowhere to put it. So I'll just drop it on one of the greens. There's another red one. I'm saying the colors are loud because I think it's probably quite difficult for you to see what they are. Here's a yellow one with nowhere to go. Now finally here's green. So watch my original, here's my trio of green about to disappear. There you go. Yellow, I'll pop that there. That's a dark blue. There are six different colors plus white, which is a special brick that I'll explain in a minute. Drop that green one there. Purple with nowhere to go, put it over there. Here's a light blue, it'll fit snugly in there. Here we go. White bricks, watch what happens when they impact. They vanish and they change the color of the brick below. So that was an added little gameplay feature that I thought of. Here's the reds about to disappear. 
and gravity takes care of the rest of them. So let's put the white one there. No, I was hoping we would get purple. I'll try again with another white. Because purple would make those three. Yes, there we go. And they vanish. So I'm doing quite well. Sometimes I do quite poorly. I think the last time I tried this I got five. Now, this is another feature of the game. Um, periodically, all the counters randomize themselves. <laughs> just to keep the player on his toes. Sometimes the randomizing effect is helpful and sometimes it's not so helpful. You can really get yourself into a jam with the whole board filled up and it just happens to randomize itself in such a way that uh, it helps you out. Sometimes that happens. So I'm starting to get into a bit of danger now. It gets harder obviously because I've got less space to play with. I just missed that one unfortunately. Oh dear. Okay, get that blue one out of the way. Here's a yellow one that helps me out. Red in there. Pop that white one over there. More red. So I'm back in the game. Don't like that right hand side. It's very, very tall. Hopefully I can do something about that in a minute. So this game is part of a game compilation called Micro Games, which is the title of a book that I've developed about programming Python on the micro bit. And this is one of the games that will be in the book. But on this occasion, I'm going to release the program listing, which is in Python. So you can find that in the description below. And if you have any NeoPixel array, you should be able to uh, get it to work as long as you have enough pixels to play with. Here we go. No combos unfortunately. I'm getting in real trouble now. Okay, let's try this one. Yes, very good. Green with nowhere to go, unfortunately. Red. No. Oh, I'm in so much trouble now. Oh dear. Come on. <laughs> Game over. Let's see what score I got on this, this occasion. Ten. Not great. That means I got 10L combinations. So that is Bitrus, as I have decided to call it, because I can't call it Tetris, because it's not Tetris. It's Bitrus for the micro bit. And if you would like to try this out, just grab the code below and put it onto your NeoPixel array. This is known as the MicroPixel by ProtoPic, and you can buy this from the ProtoPick website, which I will also link down below. So if you found this interesting, please check out the Facebook page for the Micro Games book, which is coming out in a few months. Uh, so if you're interested in getting more out of your micro bit, especially learning Python, which is where the really interesting stuff can be done, please check out Micro Games on Facebook. Coming soon from FBS Publishing.